I'm just gonna dump this on you real quick. Uh yeah. I like football. Yeah, football's pretty good. Football's football's not bad. Football's not bad. In fact, I love football so much that I would like to hear some news about football. Alright. Well, could there's a could you do that for me? Week. Okay. Uh, I guess first off, it's not on my list, but the commander's sale is basically done outside of the league approving it. Which I'm certain they will. I see no reason they wouldn't. I'm pretty sure they want Dan Snyder out. So. Yeah, I think everybody wants Dan Snyder out, to be quite honest. And so it is uh, being sold for $6 billion and is being sold to... Uh... I, think, I think Magic Johnson has something to do with it. I feel like I saw the word it's, the name Magic Johnson. It, it's It's a group that includes magic johnson i think it's like the owner of like the philadelphia 76ers the max small team like a few other sports right. teams it's like some group doesn't magic johnson have like aids and hasn't he like for a long time like how's that dude still well that was his whole thing he had so much money he beat aids <laughs> oh, okay okay so the cure for aids is just money oh okay that's cool yeah all right Good at news, least like back back in uh, his day yeah, now I think you just take a pill that they advertise on Comedy Central or something. So, yeah, no, uh, very, very exciting for, uh, like I said, I'm sure everyone's excited to get rid of Dan Snyder. What do you think Dan Snyder's going to do with his $6 billion? Probably cocaine. You think he's a coke guy? I mean, like, DC person. Yeah. What's his, what's Rich. his, back, what's his backstory? Daniel Schneider, American businessman. Um, oh come on, don't make this hard. Oh, he's actually from the area, so his family is Jewish. Shocker, with a name like Schneider. Okay, uh, his wife is Tanya Schneider. They have three children. I can't. What do we? I can't figure out what he did. Oh, founded a wallboard advertising. Snyder Communications, which, oh, so I think, like, advertising. I think that's what, I think that's what, how he got his money, advertising. That's kind of lame, but okay, whatever, I guess. <laughs> All right, well, moving on from Dan Snyder, what else we got? Uh, what else we got? Big rumors the Texans might not take a quarterback at two. Hmm. And now the reasoning for that is, uh, honestly, this QB class is generally considered not that great, despite all you know the hype up around the top four ish. To be fair, like one of them like, is really good, and the rest are right, just kind Bryce of like is really good. Yeah, but I mean, the, the Panthers are definitely taking a quarterback. If they don't take Bryce, they're pretty fucking cooked in the head. But yeah, they would have successfully been gaslit. But anyway, so. Yeah, the Texans, they got a new big defensive head coach. I mean, there's basically a 100% chance Will Anderson's still there at two. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some talk of them thinking about old Hendon Hooker because he'll probably still be on the board around two. Yeah? Yeah, and I don't hate that. I don't love it, to be quite honest. I mean, listen, if you're sitting there and your choices are, I can pick right now C.J. Stroud, or like uh, what's his name from Florida, or I can pick up the like number one defensive star, Will Anderson, and then get Hendon Hooker in the second round. Which one am I going to do? Hendon Hooker's 25? Yeah. It's kind of old to be in, high, in college. I mean, Stetson Bennett was older, so. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, that's true. I, I, I guess with the COVID mulligan year and everything. All, all them extra years. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Oh, yeah, Hendon Hooker was at VTech. Yeah, that's, ah, that's why his name seemed familiar. Uh, other than, you know, of course, Tennessee. I meant before Tennessee, so. Right. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, okay, yeah. So, yeah, CJ Stroud versus Hendon Hooker. Yeah, no, Hendon Hooker is the easy choice there, of course. I mean, CJ Stroud and uh, who, they're, God, they're astroturfing. I, I saw a commercial for it. They're astroturfing like three or four different guys yeah, right Anthony now. Anthony Richardson and yeah, Will Anthony Levis are Le okay, yeah. yeah, just like they're astroturfing the hell out of me. I look at them like, what? No, come on. You Will Levis me, right? is the real, like, did you look at this guy play at all? Yeah, I mean, uh, CJ Stroud, okay, I get it. The Ohio State decent ish numbers okay sure whatever but yeah levitt also Le throwing to like what's con what was considered like the best receivers in the country but you know sure 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 which uh last time i remember a similar situation happening down in alabama i recall everyone just running down the quarterback and said hi I, you know no i'm not gonna get started on it i'm not gonna get started on it you don't need to we we all know the truth Speaking of speaking of college, though, I saw this news thing here you had down. Uh, there will be no quarterback controversy in Austin, Texas, apparently. Yeah, apparently, uh, they're just straight going with Ewers. Which... <sighs> a bit bold. It bold? I don't think it's crazy. It's definitely... It's, it's bold, and I like it. Um, Manning needs to learn an important lesson that his name is not the be all end all right like he can't just walk up in the place and be like i'm the man and give me the job no you got to work for it quinn ewers not terrible yes okay he ended the year on a downturn but extenuating circumstances maybe but that first half of the season was really something special to be quite honest if he could repeat that i mean I don't see any reason to yeah, not have him. No B. John Robinson this year. So. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. Okay. Well, hey, on the bright side, then, we <laughs> we might see Manning then after all, eventually. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, was that it with news? Yeah, that was all I really have for news this week. Uh, I was trying to find if there was any interesting wrestling news. Apparently, there's not, actually. Uh, I did have some comments about it though later, but I'll get to that in a little bit. So let's start off with XFL and then we'll talk the much more interesting. Uh, so first off, let's see what we got. Oh God. Fuck. Vipers and so Ruffin. I'll admit, I barely watched any of these because the USFL was yeah. on and I was more interested in that. Same, same. I watched, uh, I watched bits and pieces of it enough to know that it was a pretty rough weekend um vegas vipers and houston roughnecks in houston tell you what man my roughnecks it's rough it's rough we won we won but it was is ugly uh three turnovers honest to god don't understand how like we even won this game silvers just apparently decided to stop being a good quarterback a couple of weeks ago i don't know what i don't know what the thought process was behind that but that's apparently something he's decided on and he's stuck with. So uh, that's ideal. That's great. Uh, Vegas had us there in the first half. Mounted a comeback. Pretty decent comeback. But by the skin of our team, I'm telling you, man, like, I'm looking at the, div the division. And, yeah, it's, it's not great. So I'm not too concerned. But if we do end up making it to the championship game, I that North Division's going to kick our ass, man. Hard. I. The South is a mess. The South is just a complete mess. Um, it's really... like I'm going to go ahead and say it. Whoever wins the North playoff is the de facto champion. And I don't really see much change oh, wow. on some. Yeah. Bold. I mean, have you seen the South play? I Speaking have, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of... Uh, uh, for the battle for last place in the South, uh, Guardians and the Brahmas, man, I'm going a, I'm to a be real with you, Chief. I'm going to be real with you, Chief. I bought into the hype. I bought into the Guardians comeback hype. Um, but? Apparently, yeah, Quentin Dormandy had like one good week and then he just completely fell off a cliff. So yeah, so uh, apparently they didn't believe in the comeback. Uh, close game, 
against the Brahmas, but the Brahmas pulled it out. Brahmas still in contention, I think. They've got uh, a head-to-head. Yep, they are yeah. not eliminated yet. Yeah, but so maybe that, I mean, shit, maybe that was the comeback story we should have been watching. I don't know. Fucking, I don't know. I don't even, like, I don't even know what to say about the Guardians anymore. Like, there was flashes of brilliance there, man. Flashes of brilliance. And then just, then what, what, what happened? What the fuck happened? Uh, they're the Orlando Guardians, and they've won one game. That's what you're right, you're right, you're right. Speaking of DC and what the fuck is happening with teams, uh, DC is a team. They uh, tried their best to lose this one. That the plays football. Uh, Tom, man, Tomu. I don't know. I don't know what was going. On. Off day. I don't know. Off day. Yeah, they did their best to lose this. I will give it to the Renegades. DC did their best to lose this, but the Renegades did their best to win this. To be to be fair, like yeah, the the defenders sucked, but the Renegades were like playing a level of football that I don't think we've seen them play much this year, or maybe earlier yeah, in I the mean, season. Uh, fourth quarter, Tamu went down and threw two picks, which led to two <laughs> touchdowns for the Renegades to put them back in. It. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I will say, uh, went in overtime. Perez really pissed the game away. <laughs> he lost the game yeah, for him yeah. in that shootout in overtime. Um, which I like that overtime format, by the way. I guess I've never really paid attention, but I really I really like that overtime format. That's good. Um, yeah, I mean, miss some, miss some wide open plays that honestly should have won them, won it for him. But I don't know. Tamu, Tamu got it together when it mattered. Get the dub. Still in contention. Um, Renegades. I mean, they, they locked in their first uh, first place home advantage playoff position this week. Are the Renegades still in contention? Yeah, Renegades oh, are still in contention. Right. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Defenders did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I mean, I would say this: the defenders keep playing like this because they play against like that against St. Louis. St. Louis, I was gonna say St. Louis could win, but let me go ahead and segue to the last game of the weekend. Um, St. Louis didn't win against the Sea Sea Dragons. Although, to be fair, to be fair, Danucci is kind of really good at football. Like, he's all right. Really good, I think. Uh, AJ is back, was back uh, after being injured last week, or I don't know if injured is really the right word. And he was just out. Um, he was back, but he wasn't back. He was still playing like he was hurt. Two interceptions, less than 50% completion. Like, this was not a stellar game for A.J. McCarron. No, and it was not a good game. That's, that's really rough to see. Um, I, uh, Seattle, so so with this win, Seattle is still in it. Uh, right. the, Battle, the Battle Hawks are still in it. They would have clinched with this, but no, that didn't happen. Um, so both these, man, it's crazy. The, the North is, like, going to come down to the wire, right? Like It is, and I don't know how they're, tiebreaker rules work in the episode. I have no idea. Because like they both beat each other once. Right. So uh next week, of course, will be the last week of the regular season, week ten. Time flies when you're having fun, I guess. Uh our first game at eleven AM on Saturday is gonna be the Guardians and the Battle Hawks. Hoping AJ can use this to bounce back. Get that arm, shoulder, whatever the hell it is going again. And obviously, hopefully not have to struggle win this one. That would be ideal. 2 p.m. Saturday, Defenders and the Brahmas. Brahmas on a hot streak. Defenders not on a hot streak. Uh, this one kind of could go either way. This is a home game for the Brahmas. Would mean a lot to win this. Would mean a lot to win this. So keep an eye on that one. Uh, Sunday at 2, another battle in Texas. Roughnecks and Renegades. Roughnecks, as I said, just like just gave up. Apparently, like they just gave up playing football. Renegades playing a little, probably going to be playing a little angry after that loss. This is, yeah, I mean, one. you figure the Roughnecks kind of want to beat up on the Renegades here since if they don't, they'll be playing them next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, that's that, that's definitely the other one to watch. 
Uh, and then 6 p.m. Sunday, the the Vipers and the Sea Dragons. Uh, you know, maybe just let this one go straight to DVR or watch the highlights on YouTube later. I think this one's going to be an ass kicking, to be quite honest. So uh, don't uh, don't get too caught up in that one. Anyway, yeah, you know, XFL is cool. XFL is cool, whatever. But USFL is back and it's pretty good. Like it's a good product. We were talking about it, and it's like, we, I, I can't really put my finger on it. Like, what makes it better? It just is. I, I, I can't I, I can't really tell you. Um, I want to pull up this site. It just, like, feels like a more proper product. Well, I think primary... Okay, so first off, it's it's on Fox. It's Fox is, like, behind it fully. So that kind of gives it an air of legitimacy. You've got like actual commentators on it and not like third string ESPN guys. That also really helps. Right. It just kind of has that to to borrow a wrestling phrase. It just kind of has that big big match feel to it. Um first game of the weekend was the uh what the Philadelphia Stars and the Memphis Showboats. Showboats were not uh, in the lead last year, so this is the first time they've competed since 1984, which, like I said last week, I think that might be one of the longer, like, time periods between a team playing and not playing. I would have to look it up. Probably it some obscure-ass baseball when I was, team. When I was looking it up, or at least in terms of the USFL, the gap for, like, a lot of the teams is about the same, because a few of the teams, like, stopped a year before the showboat stopped. Oh, so yeah, that's true. When that's they came true. back last year, it's the same time gap as that. Yeah. Yeah, but like I said, I'm sure there's like some obscure ass like baseball team from like the 1800s or something that didn't play for 200 years. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Memphis, not the best team ever. Uh, I'm trying to pull up a list of players, but it doesn't want to. I want to talk about the players because we were uh last week we said we were going to put it off to this week but it doesn't seem like i'm, I'm gonna just like straight up look it up but uh tell you me can, uh, tell me on their website work tell, well i'm just yeah okay uh tell me your thoughts on this game uh so first game of the usfl this year i was pretty impressed by the quality of it uh, old uh, Case Cookus. Yes. The, oh, that was the title we were going to go with. Cooking. Damn it. Cookus. Well, he ended up not being the most cooking quarterback of this. Yeah, team. well. No. Good lord. Jesus, this guy's only 27, but he has a laundry list of teams he has played. How did he play for four different teams in one year? What the fuck? <laughs> uh, probably just got kept getting traded something. around. Um, yeah, so he started with the Giants in 20, and then 21, he was with the Broncos, the Vikings, the Raiders, and the Edmonton Elks. Um, oh, and it looks like he was with last the Stars four. last year, then went to the Rams, and now he's back at the Stars. Yeah, I recall he was, like, doing pretty well with the Stars last year, and then he got, like, sidelined by an injury. <sighs> Hate to see him. Like, potentially would have won the season championship but mm -hmm. then he got like i think in the playoffs he got hurt and lost mm -hmm. that kind of lost in their moment hate to see it he's out of northern arizona which i am just now finding out as a school oh well, many such cases many such cases they, they play in a dome in flagstaff it's actually a pretty cool looking dome i'm not gonna lie uh yeah no um I, I'm not I wasn't too thrilled about this one to be quite honest obviously Memphis is kind of a I mean it's close enough for me to kind of root for it and be like oh yeah hell yeah hell yeah but I mean it was it was a well-fought game it's it's way too early to kind of be like oh well you know they should have won this one kind of like you know how we were in the first week of the um XFL so it's a little early to be talking about this now I'm pulling up quarterback here uh Cole Keely Kelly? I'm not sure which one that is. Kelly. Kelly. All right. He's out of... Oh, he was uh, with the Razorbacks. 
and then southeastern Louisiana, which I am just now finding out is a, is a school. Recurring theme here. I was with the Commanders last yeah, I think year. They're, uh, I think their main quarter, the showboat's main quarterback was B. White. B. White. Hmm. I'm not going to make a comment on that. It's uh, Brady White. That name sounds super familiar. Why does that sound so familiar? Uh, Arizona oh. State and then in Memphis. Yeah, because he played for... Oh, yeah, I, I vaguely remember him in Memphis. He was actually pretty good. He played for the... What the hell is the TSL Alphas? Oh, the Spring the League. Spring League. What the hell is the Spring League? Apparently it existed. Oh, it on June 3rd, 2021, Woods announced that he had acquired the remaining extant trademarks of the USFL with intent of launching a USFL branded league in 2022 with Fox. So did it merge? Oh, it looks like they were going to, but then like something happened and then they weren't. That sounds like a, that sounds like a clusterfuck. I'm not going to get into that that's not like a whole can of worms that sounds like a whole can of worms and i don't i'm not too smart to get into uh but yeah no you're you're right like there's just something something just a je ne sais quoi about this and then it just feels maybe it's because there's not like a bunch of like they're not trying a bunch of new stuff it's just football like you were talking about yeah. how like it just it's 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 kind of cool to just see them get up there and kick the extra point like i respect what the xfl is doing i really do i think it's fun but it is sometimes fun to just watch football. So, right. Uh, later in the evening, we had the New Jersey Generals and my Birmingham Stallions, reigning champions, of course, beat the absolute dog shit out of them. Love to see it. Who we got on the NJ Generals here? We got um, uh, DeAndre Johnson as quarterback out of. Oh, he also played for the Spring League. Oh, he was a uh, Johnson. East Mississippi Community College. I know that. Sort of. 13 pass attempts for them and four completions. Ooh, woof. And, that... and then uh, they had another guy play as well. Um, Dakota Pruckup? That's not a yeah. real name. That's not a real name. And he went 13 of 17, which is much oh. better than 4 of 13. Oh, so where is he out of? Montana State and Oregon. A lot, I'm seeing a lot of these <laughs> recurring theme. A lot of these guys, because they, they probably weren't starters, of course. So they probably bounced around from a bunch of different teams. Um, He got, oh, apparently he got benched at Oregon in, in favor of a, a little up and comer you might have heard of called Justin Herbert. So, rip yeah, him. Heard of him. yeah, once or twice. Uh, yeah, no, I just he beat the dog piss at him. I've, I don't want to. So, okay, so here's the thing is Birmingham is probably going to be the favorites again to win the championship this year. So, like, yeah, not shocking that they beat the dog piss out of him. Yeah, I mean, it's. Having not super closely followed the USFL last year, it's kind of hard to say like what I'm expecting out of each team initially. Mm -hmm. Like it'll probably be like three ish weeks in before. Oh no, I I slept on the USFL hard last year, man. Well, yeah, because it was just kind of a like a clown show that was was. all in the same stadium. No, it it was it was all in the same stadium, but worse of all was that it was on like ten different channels, some of them streaming exclusive. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not going to fire up the streaming just to watch football, like subpar football in an empty stadium in Birmingham. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm just not going to do it. Uh, Alex Magoo, so that's a name, is the quarterback for the Stallions. Lovely looking man. Looks like he's trying to sell me insurance. Uh, he's out of FIU. Interestingly, so far, I think he's the only quarterback who actually played his entire career at one school. Good for him. He was with the Seahawks for a little bit, the Jags, the Texans. Uh, and then, yeah, he was with the Stallions last year. Um, I, yeah, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of remember that name a little bit. Uh, not great stats 
on the year, three touchdowns and three interceptions. Uh, kind of going for those Jameis Winston numbers, sounds like. Base? And then behind him, we got uh, Jamar Smith, who... Oh, shout out, Jamar Smith, who is from Meridian, Mississippi. I know where that is. Uh, okay, I don't... Uh, good, good for him. Anyway, that was Saturday. So, so today, uh, Panthers and the Gamblers, man... I, I thought the gamblers I thought the gamblers were gonna make this a game, but they went in the locker room and they huddled up and they said, Alright boys, fuck this shit. On God. And yeah, then I'll just tell you what came and decided not to pick another touchdown. Josh Love, the quarterback for the Panthers. Is that right? Oh boy old boy can sling it. Is that right? Eighteen to twenty. For uh, two fifteen yards and three touchdowns. Very nice. I was excited about. Oh, oh, uh, never mind. I was. That's Houston. Never mind. Ignore me. Uh, we got Kenji Kenji Bahar out of Ma. Oh, listen. This is how you know you got a banger quarterback when he went to Monmouth. Off oh. the top of your head, tell me where the hell Monmouth is. Let's see, Monmouth. That sounds. That kind of sounds like it'd be in the northeast yeah. of the U.S. Yeah, that was my that was my gut reaction. I, I was thinking like Delaware or something. Which uh, New Jersey? Yeah, so I was correct. So. Shout out their coach Kevin Callahan on his thirtieth season. This guy has been coaching football almost as long as I've been alive. That's I mean, my man's got the passion. That's you would love to see it. It's like he got that he's got that Kirk Ferentz deal over there. God bless him. Uh, yeah, we got Terry Wilson too out of geez. What college did he not go to? This dude, my man's went to four different colleges. Jeez Louise, worse than me. Uh, Oregon, Garden City Community College, Kentucky for two years, uh, which is weird because I don't remember that name at all from Kentucky. And then finally in hey, New who Mexico. Are you talking about right now? Terry Wilson. Terry Wilson? Terry Wilson. Who got? Who who played? He's the uh, he's the backup quarterback for the Gamblers. He played one game last year, and the, he has no stats. So I don't under like I don't. He didn't even like pass the ball. I don't think. Oh, yeah, that's what's confused. I was looking at the passing stats, and I only see Bahar there. But I think I think I he, he literally just like took a snap and kneeled. <laughs> it looks like he. <laughs> He has two rushing attempts for 11 yards, so I guess he ran the ball. Uh, okay, well, good for him. Uh, yeah, no, Panthers Panthers looking good. Panthers pretty good. Uh, or maybe the Gamblers just suck. Again, I don't know. I don't know what to do Hard with to any... I, I don't know what to do with literally any of these numbers right now. So, is what it is. And then finally, the Pit Maulers and the New Orleans Breakers, who is my backup team in case the Stallions start sucking. Uh, I'm allowed to like the breakers again because old Larry Fedora apparently left and went back to hell where he belongs. Fuck Larry Fedora. I'll tell you what, McLeod Bethel Thompson, the quarterback I, for the breakers. My man's got a beard. I'm going to be racist for a second. I thought that was going to be a black guy. Yeah, with a name like McLeod. Well, first, hold on. First off, get his full name right. It's McLeod John Balthazar Bethel Thompson. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, like, um, I don't. You see a lot of like whenever you see a hyphenated name like in the NFL, it usually ends up being a black guy. And I don't know why right, that is. That, that first name like screams like Scottish or whatever. whatever. Yeah, and then Balthazar isn't helping. Um. He is the grandson of the 1948 Olympic shot put champion Wilbur Moose Thompson. Base? Okay. That's uh draw on and drop on. Yeah, fuck, I'll find it later. Uh oh shit, he's 34 years old. Well, God bless him. God bless him. He's out of uh UCLA and uh Sac State. Wait. How is he? I don't know. Uh, I was, 
those numbers don't make any sense. Uh, God, the laundry list of teams he has played for. He right. was on a lot of practice squads. Let's, 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 let's run down this one real quick. San Jose. Who the hell is the San Jose Sabercats? Oh, arena football. Is arena football still going? It is. I feel like it's not. Uh, no, it's, oh, it rebooted this year, apparently. On February 1st, 2023. Oh, they're returning next year. Oh, man. I feel like we're, mm, I don't like, I feel like we're getting into like a saturation point. Like, it's already bad enough. Even with just these two and like, I think fan controlled football and shit like that, it's real small. Yeah. Fan controlled football, though, is like so niche. That I feel like it's oh I feel like it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna survive. Like it, it's fine. And they in fact I don't know if you know, but fan control football actually added basketball now. So there's a fan control basketball oh. now. Yeah. Um and I think I think they had like they renamed their whole thing to like fan controlled sports or something. Yeah, they did. I'm in their Discord. Um so yeah. Uh yeah, but yeah, no, I don't like we don't need oh god, and is um I don't they don't call it the lingerie football league anymore. They changed it. They call it the X League now, and it still exists, so owner Mike Ditka. Why does that not shock me? Why does that yeah. not shock me at all? That Mike Ditka owns the lingerie football league. It's just right. It just, yeah, that's that doesn't shock me at all. Hmm. But, yeah, so, uh, going back to old McLeod, John Balthazar. Oh, yeah, I was going to read that whole thing. Thompson or whatever. Uh, uh, go ahead. My man's chucked the ball a lot. Wasn't yes. the most accurate. Well, but you he, know. He tried 41 times. Good for him. And he did put up 302 yards. Really? Yeah. That's actually fairly impressive. I mean, I feel like I would hope you'd get that much when you throw the ball 41 times. True. Your backup is a guy named Davis Cheek. I don't... I don't like that. And then, uh... Old Schittsburg, they kind of suck. Yeah, well, the whole city of Pittsburgh sucks, so that's on brand. So let's see who their quarterback sure. is. James Morgan and Troy Williams. James Morgan, born a hey, Green Bay native, shout out. Went to Bowling Green and then FIU. Oh, he's a young man, but he's played for a lot of teams already. Oh, he was another one who was with the Maulers last year, left for the NFL, came back. So, Yeah, I think looking at this, he made the practice squad. Yeah, he was on the practice squad for the mm. Cardinals. He was actually a fourth round pick to the Jets in twenty. Hmm. And then Troy Williams out of Utah. Okay. Oh, and Washington. Another one of those. Uh and then played man, a lot of these guys played up in the CFL. Ooh, those are not good stats. Oof. Uh yeah, no, the Maulers uh kinda suck. But that's okay because we don't care about Yankee teams. So Mm -hmm. uh yeah breakers look good in this pit did not so uh once again southern teams rock yankee teams suck so usfl glad to see you back glad to see you on coherent channels uh most of all yeah, for real so let's see what we got it's, next uh, week fox or two of them nbc for another and then fox sports one for the fourth uh yeah so next year is uh houston and new orleans are gonna be on usa i don't love that but it is what it is but that night we got the showboats and the stallions on fox uh gamblers and breakers that's gonna be an interesting one because i feel like the gamblers kind of have it together but the breakers had a full game so interesting to see what happens there showboats and the stallions obviously I'm I'm expecting my stallions to just absolutely go ham on these guys. So Sunday noon NBC. Yeah, that's I will say the one thing I don't like about NBC is Chris Collinsworth's son on the call. Like he's like a good sideline guy, but he sucks on the mic, man. 
He's apparently everyone hates the Collinsworths. I like Chris Collinsworth. Like father, like son. No, oh, wow. I like Chris Collinsworth. I like Chris. He's a classic. Him and Al Michaels, I think, are like the classic duo. And I was so sad when they weren't, you know, doing the thing anymore. So, I like, I, I, I it's okay. I don't like him and Tariko. Is that controversial? No, I don't think it's that controversial. Okay, because I don't like Tariko very much. But, uh, but yeah, I'm not excited for that. But I... Who two Yankee teams? Who cares? I'll just watch on a mute. Uh, also, these teams both kind of suck, so it'll be interesting to see which one sucks less. And then finally, 6 p.m. Uh, Fox Sports One, Panthers and the Stars. Uh, Panthers really good outing this week. Really good outing. I feel like this can be a competitive game. This could be a good one. So uh, it's always fun to watch these new leagues and stuff, and kind of see like where everyone's at. Because that first week's fun, but that second week is even more fun because you're like, all right, now let's really see who's got it here. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, so I had some I had some comments here on wrestling moving on from football. Uh, not, a, not, a, not really a lot to talk about in the show. Shinsuke Nakamura came back this week. Really, really low-key match that he had against uh, some jabroni. I forgot. I don't even remember his name. So, What's crazy, though, Outside of it, Omas, right? Yeah, seven Omos seven thing. foot two of fall, huge, huge, huge man. Big old guy, right? Very serious. Apparently, he is a massive anime dude. And actually... Yeah, the, the point that he even, like, does fan art himself. I was actually just about to say that, like, I... Because I pulled this, this article up, and I didn't actually read it till just now. Yeah, he loves Naruto and he has an art Instagram. And it's like, he's not. It's not great. Okay, like, let's just yeah. get out there. It's not great. However, I'm not going to be the one to tell him it's not great. Are you? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Hold on. I've also Jordan, seen worse. So. Jordan, the artist. Apparently, he's only posted nine things. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've seen way worse. Damn, he he posted a big old booty bitch. All right, yeah, but uh, said and that's just kind of crazy to me because like they've presented him as just like this giant, and he like never talks or anything. But apparently, he's like an incredibly personable guy. So I feel like he's almost being wasted a little bit. You gotta let this guy on the mic or something. You gotta do something. Don't don't just have him be like the Andre the Giant, like come out there just look huge like let's see what this guy's got you know yeah let him cook let you let let him cook yeah uh i feel like it's something else but apparently it didn't because i just had that one thing open um apparently oh i read this this is completely off topic but apparently kevin owens has like an a son who's already almost seven feet tall which is crazy because like no fuck. how old is his son? Because Kevin Owens isn't even that old. He's like what? Yeah, thirty eight. So how old is his son? Also, his 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 son's name is Owen. Oh right, I forgot his real name's not Owens. His real name's Kevin Steen. So Owen Steen. That that's not a great name. I'm not gonna be the one to tell him that though. They have a son named Owen. It doesn't say when they were born, though. Hmm. Looks like he was 14 in 2021, so. Jeez Louise. That kid's got the Baron Trump genes. What the hell? How are you 6'6 six, six at 14? Woof. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, well. oh there's like some Drew McIntyre drama, apparently. Apparently he's like... He like blacked out all his social media, and people are thinking he's gonna quit. But I don't know. Uh, that seems to yeah that it wasn't much. I would, like there's not really much interesting going on until uh backlash. So right, I'm not uh I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, you know what we forgot to do last week? We forgot to do power rankings in XFL. Yeah, we did. The power rankings have been kind of in a shit show since yeah like all the fucking teams that shouldn't be losing are losing and whatnot for real <laughs> i thought about that i was like how do you even do power rankings when literally it just seems like a bunch of teams are just playing to lose so right 
I mean, I could cook some up. But... Uh, DC's still good. Houston's kind of okay. Vipers are good, but also not at the same time. There's your power rankings. And here's yeah. your, hey, here's your USL, USFL power rankings. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Stallions are the best. Everyone else sucks. Oh, wow. Yeah. I said it. So. All right. Well, that's about it for this week, I guess, unless you got anything else. That's all I got. All right. Well, I'll see you. You know what? How about we do this again next week? Hold on one sec. What? Are you having to think about it? No, I was uh, <laughs> looking up what day the draft is. Oh, yeah, that is very soon. Which that'll I think be... it's next Thursday. Yeah, it's next Thursday, so we'll talk about that a, bo- a bit more next week. Yeah. Hey, uh, make sure you get your sleep tonight for that. You gonna you gonna you gonna be up bright and early for that spaceship launch tomorrow? You'll probably be up anyway. Yeah, I mean, since they pushed it back to like nine Eastern, I'll be up anyway for work. Yeah, that didn't do with sports, but if it was. Uh... If it was at eight Eastern, I probably would have slept through it. Cause oh. I need my views. Nah, man, nah, man. I'm, I'm gonna have that on in the theater room. I'm gonna crank it up. I want to hear the. <laughs> Love that. Shit, Think man. it'll blow up? You know, it's 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 macabre a little bit. Like we watch because we want to see the great technological scientific leap forward for mankind, right? Like we're on our way back to the moon. We're on our way to Mars. It's a but literal reusable rocket in every part. It's it's a wonder of science. But everyone and their mother would be lying if they said they didn't tune in. Just in case. Just right. in case. So Especially with you know the biggest rocket we've yeah. ever launched. Yeah. Literally could go off at like the power of a small atomic bomb. So uh all right, well. Looking forward to that. So that had nothing to do with sports, so. All right. See everyone next week. Goodbye.